Bienvenue to Swanta Reporters Plus on France 24. In this edition, we take you to the Central African Republic, a country that's never known peace since it gained independence in 1960. There have been five coups d'etat. The last one was in 2013, when a rebel coalition known as the Selika seized power. The Selika was incapable of bringing any kind of security to the country and clung on for just over a year. Now divided and split, they've nonetheless maintained their ability to cause nuisance, and they still dream of taking power. France and Cat reporters James André and Anthony Fouchard have been to the Selika stronghold of Ndele, in the northeast of the Central African Republic. They've had a unique insight into what amounts to a parallel state where the guns speak louder than any words. The sound of army boots and songs ring out on the streets of Mdili. Every morning, FPRC militiamen run across the city centre to train and remind everyone who's in charge. Noreddin Adam and Abdullah Isen, two of the main commanders of the ex seleka respectively political and military heads of the FPRC, the popular front for the renaissance of the Central African Republic. Eighty percent of the Central African Republic is beyond the control of the state. The FPRC, an armed group with a Muslim majority, has complete control over the entire north of the country, an area rich with natural resources on the borders with Chad and Sudan. Ndele is Abdullahi Sen's stronghold, a small town of 13,000 inhabitants, lost in the bush, 650 kilometers from Bangui, the capital. There are no paved roads to come here. To go to Bangui, one has to travel for several days on dirt tracks or be able to afford the UN flights that rotate twice a week. Airplanes that Abdullah Sen, the master of Ndele, no longer has the right to board. He's been placed on international sanction lists. The FPRC military leader is wanted by the Central African Republic for abuses committed by his troops in 2015. He was one of the commanders of the Seleka rebels' bloody descent on Bangui in 2013, which plunged the country into chaos and led to a coup d'état against former president François Bozizé. Bonjour, Excellences, sur les officiers, sur les pour vous rendre les honneurs. Devant vous, le colonel Mohamed Vendik. Abdoulaye Sen then became minister in Michel Jotodia's Seleka government until it was removed under international pressure in 2014. The problem is real. We've been here for four years. It's been four years since we retreated here because we respected the international community who told us, listen, you need to leave because there have been security issues. They said it would take two weeks. In two weeks, we will bring security back to the Central African Republic. It's been four years of waiting with all the heavily armed men you see here. We are here and we are waiting. The government and the president of the republic neither have the strength nor the means nor the right policy to rally the people. It is unacceptable. We cannot accept that everyday people die in the Central African Republic. Deaths that stir up hatred between communities. On the 8th of April 2018, UN peacekeepers launched Operation Sukula to arrest force the leader of a local militia operating at Kilometer 5, a predominantly Muslim neighborhood in Bangui. The operation turned into a complete fiasco. The UN troops were shot at and retaliated. 20 people were killed in the neighborhood and 11 peacekeepers were injured. On the 11th of April, the population of Kilometer 5 laid 17 dead bodies in front of the UN headquarters in Bangui, and Abdullah Isen started to mass his forces preparing to attack the capital. 
Today his fighters are still positioned. It's the international community, it's MINUSCA, it's the Blue Helmets who have gone in to kill these people. This community is mine. I am part of this community. A community that is a minority here in the CAR. In any country, if there is a problem, minorities are protected. MINUSCA does the opposite. MINUSCA is the UN peacekeeping force in the Central African Republic. Its 13,000 men are deployed since 2014. In Ndele, it's represented by a unit of Pakistani peacekeepers that are barely tolerated by the rebels. They patrol the city with tanks like this one. In all, they have three. Captain Zahaib is in charge. The main challenges are to be accepted by a weary population. and overcome the language barrier. Sometimes I, I honestly, I use the translator, language translator, in my uh, mobile phone. But since it's uh, not around, so I, I, I know some, some words, some uh, things to say, and I know the meanings too, and I communicate them like, what's your name, how are you, uh, how's, long, uh, how's the day been? Minuska has a fort in the city centre. From this elevated position, they observe the comings and goings of the FPRC units, without really being able to intervene. Their mandate is not to disarm them. The Blue Helmets are outgunned and outnumbered. They don't have the firepower to impose anything on the rebels. All they can do is negotiate, often using their shared faith. Uh, if, if they're doing something wrong, we observe that they're doing, doing this wrong, they're doing injustice or any, any such sort of thing. We advise them, we, we tell them not to do it because you know, we, we try to tell them about their own religion, that they don't know, this is not in your religion, you know, you're not supposed to do this. Sometimes, yeah, they agree. Sometimes they quit things like that. Like the FPRC fighters, the population of Ndele is predominantly Muslim. It is the month of Ramadan. After the prayer, many of the faithful meet in front of the Meshwi stalls of the local market to break the fast. FPRC militiamen, armed to the teeth, patrol, monitor and ensure that calm prevails. No national security forces operate in Delhi, neither police nor gendarmerie, let alone the FACA, the Central African Army. We have been abandoned by the state. There is no road, no health, no school. We suffer. It's as if we are not citizens of the Central African Republic. Currently, as you can see, there are FPRC fighters who ensure security, and we feel safe. There is also a Christian community in town. Here, scouts can parade on Delhi's main street without being worried. An astonishing scene in a country where religion has been instrumentalized and where violence is exercised on a confessional basis. There are no religious problems here in the city of Ndele. We hear about the things that are happening elsewhere in Bambari province and all that. But here there are no serious problems. No one prevents Christians from praying here. Is that thanks to the FPRC? Well, yes, I guess you could say that it is thanks to the FPRC. According to the vicar, leaving Christians in peace is part of the armed group's strategy. Well, very often, 
Very often, elsewhere, it's the armed groups that are responsible for these problems. These incidents between Christians and Muslims. But here, they are the ones in charge. And they don't want attacks on Christians to be possible. There is little tension between Christians and Muslims in Delhi. But nonetheless, this is a city run by armed men. The atmosphere is feverish in the playground at Ndoka School. It's graduation day. These teachers are gathered to decide which children will be handed their primary education certificate. They are civil servants paid by the education ministry. The FPRC does not have the means to manage the school system and lets them work. On the other hand, the presence of the armed group in the city has a strong influence on the pupils. When they see them running in the morning and singing in full military attire, some kids are tempted. And lately, when they went down towards Bangui, a lot of high school students dropped out of classes to follow them. The teachers are ready to hand down their verdict. In turn, each school principal calls his ten best pupils. The teacher's task is simple with these good students, but things will be more difficult with those who have failed. Most of the students have their parents in this armed group. Most of the children who come to school are the sons and daughters of these armed men. It's difficult. Especially when we try to correct the children. They say they will talk to a colonel, a general. We are afraid. The teachers are afraid of correcting them. They threaten us. Yes, the last time the supervisor received a death threat, we found an inscription on the wall. It read, you have two days left before we shoot you with a rocket. In Ndele, the FPRC wants to demonstrate that it can be more than just an armed group. Abdullah Hissène has recreated a gendarmerie force that is supposed to protect and serve the population. We are taking responsibility. We're even managing the tasks of the state. It was necessary to set up a gendarmerie brigade in order to handle the population. There are cases of robbery and theft and some small problems that need solving. The gendarmes have very little means. They have a single prison cell for police custody, which officially cannot exceed 48 hours. The crimes are recorded on simple notebooks. There is no proper justice system. Once custody is over, customary law applies. Traditional authority is embodied by the Sultan Mayor of Ndele, a title handed down from father to son. He acts as a judge and settles disputes. Today, he is on the outskirts of Ndele, flanked by a sub-prefect, one of the few officials tolerated by the FPRC. International NGOs have decided to build an extension to a school located between two villages. Workers have been recruited from each of them, but there are tensions. We just talk to them. They agree on the work, the distribution of activities, the workforce and other. Mediation is done on the building site. Each side presents its arguments and the Sultan finds a solution. 
The sub-prefect is one of three officials that are supposed to represent the authority of the Central African state in the region. But he is alone and has no office and no car. There's a shortage of state services. We're three, the sub-prefect of Dele, but he's also on mission in Bangui. The prefect himself is on mission and they will be back soon. We do our best with what we have. We're here to prove that the state's authority is coming back gradually and the other services can come back as well and so on. Asked about the FPRC, which collects taxes in place of the state, the sub-prefect appears ill at ease. That I don't know for sure, but maybe. Wait, I'll answer them. About the taxes you mention, it's no secret to anyone. He represents the state. He is not a tax or customs agent. And since there is not a customs officer, there is no tax agent. Certainly, there is this replacement. That's right, they levy the tax, they collect money. Here the state only exists through the prefect, the mayor and sub-prefect. But here there is nothing, not even a justice system, no court, no prosecutor. It's true, we have a serious problem. Ndele Central Market is the largest in the region. It's a commercial hub on the track to Chad and Sudan. In addition to established traders, hundreds of women come here every day from their village to sell their crops and buy food. In the absence of the state, the FPRC has started collecting taxes to finance its activities. The tax office is installed in the abandoned sub-prefecture building. My role is to work for the tax department. These are contributory taxes only for the security of the shops, the shops that are in the central market of Ndele. Ali Adam Daoud, grocer at the market, has come to pay the balance of his taxes. In all, for this year, he will have paid 15,000 CFA francs, about 22 euros, to the rebels and nothing to the Central African state. Merchants who do not have an actual store are not taxed. For those who have, the tax is determined empirically by one of the six tax agents, according to the perceived value of their business. We call it a contribution. It's not a tax as such. It's a voluntary contribution. It's a flat tax. If it is 30,000 francs, for example, the trader can pay in three installments, 10,000 francs, sometimes 5,000 per month until he finishes in five or six months. Shopkeepers who pay feel safe. They can actually leave their goods in their stalls at night and sleep at home. That's unusual in CAR. Well, before I used to pay 60,000 francs a year to the government. But now the FPRC is in charge, they don't tax as much. They just take a package of 8,000 francs a year. 8,000. 8,000 CFA francs, about 12 euros, a symbolic sum that helps impose the idea of an FPRC tax without making the shopkeepers angry. Trucks passing through Ndele, often loaded with goods from Chad and Sudan, are more heavily taxed. FPRC fighters board them at the checkpoint that controls the entrance of their territory and escort them to the tax office. There, they have to pay about 200,000 CFA francs. That's 350 euros, a fortune. Collecting taxes is a strong symbol for anyone setting up a proto-state. But it is far from being the only income source for the armed group. Northern CAR is full of untapped resources. Oil, gold and diamonds. Ndao Mine is located 42 kilometers from Delhi. It is a three-hour ride in the bush. The track is narrow and rugged, impassable by car. These motorcycles commute daily between Dao and Delhi, and technical problems are common. Allez. 
the FPRC monitors this track very closely. Bandits know that all the diamonds from the mine are transported this way. Have we arrived? We've arrived. We're going to see the village chief. Okay. Hundreds of miners come to work here several days at a time. An entire village has grown around the mine. Here, to find diamonds, all you have to do is dig. Before, the stones were dug out one after the other. There were hundreds of workers, but now there's not enough money to work properly. The mine extends as far as the eye can see. Hundreds of holes have been excavated with shovels. All are several meters in depth. There are no machines on the site. It is midday, the temperature is 40 degrees, and it is Ramadan. Almost no one is working. It's too hard, there's too much suffering. It's not good. In other mines, they have machines. But here we have to dig with shovels. It's not good. Activity is slow also because of international sanctions. The collectors who finance the mining and recover the stones no longer want to invest here. The export of diamonds from the north of the country has been strictly banned since 2013. But there is trafficking. According to the UN, $24 million worth of diamonds have been smuggled out of the Central African Republic in the first 18 months that followed the imposition of sanctions. Diamonds are a major source of funding for the FPRC, which controls a score of mines like this one. Central African diamonds are amongst the world's purest. According to experts, 39 million carrots are still waiting to be extracted in the country. Enough to whet the appetite of foreign actors. After the Chinese who extracted the region's oil until 2017, the Russians are starting to make their move. This amateur footage, dated 11th of May 2018, shows an 18 truck convoy. On board, 55 Russia linked paramilitaries have come to present a gift to the FPRC a field hospital. The Russians have been invited very officially by President Touadéra's government to train and equip Central African soldiers down south. Clearly, the Russians are also trying to make contact with the rebels. Abdullah Sen decided to stop and search the convoy, which in addition to the medical equipment, contained weapons. After the search, the trucks continued on their way to Bria, a rebel-held area where the field hospital was set up. This Russian presence worries FPRC leaders. I think there is also provocation on behalf of the government when they say that they will use the Russians against us. There was indeed a phone call to the coordination to tell us, we will eliminate you. You have become Kanda, meatballs. So they say they're going to crush all of us and make us into meatballs to eat. We are not afraid of the Russians. If the Russians cross our path to fight, we're ready. 
Noreddin Adam's chief of staff is concerned, and so is the organization's political leader. The general perceives the presence of the Russians as a provocation, because from the start, we have considered the Russians to be our enemies. When they arrived with their weapons, we heard on the radio Central African people shouting, it's over for you. We can stop them, of course, but seriously, we have to consider the sheer power of the Russians compared to our own. A new player, at a time when African Union sponsored mediation with the government, is underway. No, we are not at war. We are in a process that the African Union has already put in place. We also submitted our recommendations. We are only waiting for the finalization of the African Union process. Abdoulaye Issen, the warlord, returns to the FPRC's main military base. In the pickups, his men are restless. We are ready. We are committed. We're ready in 15 days. No, no, no. Okay, okay. We will not stop fighting before we achieve victory. One day we will be in Bangui. The FPRC claims to have 12,000 fighters, an unverifiable figure. On the other hand, its ability to destabilize the CAR is long proven. Our men are in Bangui. They're simply waiting for the green light. That's all there is to it. I think I have 872 men at the ready. We drop it here and then boom. It's going to explode. It can go a thousand kilometers. See, like that, directly to PK-12. And then directly to the presidential palace. We will go and take Bangui. We're ready to go to Bangui with this. These fighters dream of marching on Bangui just as they did back in 2013. But the situation on the ground has changed. Minusca peacekeepers and French fighter jets are ready to stop them. In the north, the FPRC's parallel state appears impossible to uproot. The only solution seems to be a political deal that avoids both a partition of the country and a bloodbath. And our thanks again to James Andre and Anthony Fouchard for their report. See it again on our website, francefancat.com. This is Reporters Plus of France Fancat. Stay with us.